Hey, what's up YouTube? JB here, and today I wanna to take a look into some future units, specifically a couple of dark units that I think have a pretty big potential uh, impact on the meta. Now, if you're a dark player, you know that it's been a bit of a rough road for a while now, but what I'm here to say is I think that the winds of change are blowing and that dark may be back in the spotlight very, very soon. So let's take a look at it. And the first thing that I really want to do is kind of look at a timeline here. And this is specifically kind of in context of the light versus dark balance in the EX era. Uh, and I say what I'm commenting most, mostly here is uh, on the auto metagame. You know, the, the manual, uh, you know, the manual meta is a little bit more resilient, you know, when it comes to these elemental shifts. Uh, Though certainly, you know, light has been, you know, a major player there as well. But, you know, anyway, we know that way back in June of last year, uh, you know, technically it was uh, end of May, uh, but uh, that's when we got Black Rose Helena. And, you know, frankly, Helena uh, pretty much single-handedly, you know, kicked off that, uh, that dark meta. Um, Interestingly, we did get a very, very nice card for Dark, you know, in that uh, that month as well, and that was the Maidens of the Rose card. Now, that, that's a card I've talked about before, but a very, very strong combination of, of both 35% dex and 35% luck on that card. So, you know, several weeks go by, people are getting their Black Rose Helenas online. We then get Dwayne EX in July, very early July. Uh, Dwayne was a, is a very, very, uh, you know, popular unit on the global side, and you know he he basically created a very potent one-two punch, you know, when paired with Helena, in terms of both like, you know, incredible damage, you know, and very nice survivability. And it wasn't really anything that any other element in the game, never mind light, could match, you know, for for a very long time. You know, and that's a period that uh, that I call the dark summer. You know, it seemed like that summer lasted forever when we're talking about War of the Visions PvP. Now, things really changed in a big way when we look back at September of uh, last year. Uh, first with a couple of very key EX units for the light, light elements in uh, both Engelbert and Fina. And then at the very end of September, we actually got a, a global original in Starlight Elena. Hugely popular unit, you know, and she came paired with a very nice vision card of 35% luck as well. Uh, just a short, maybe week or two later, we then got Jaden, and all of a sudden, Light had a very, very powerful one two combination of their own. And, you know, once all these pieces were in place, is when things really, really shifted in a, in a big way. And Elena's vision card, I think gave Jaden even more power, power than had been seen on, on the uh, Japanese side. And then it really upped the game for his accuracy. And that was really always his Achilles heel. But having that 35% luck went a long way in terms of you know building him in a way that he could deal with the evade units as well. And that's really what kicked off the, the light meta, you know, the light fall. And that's really where we've continued for, for months and months now, you know, th through the winter and you know, frankly, I see this going into the spring as well. I, you know, there's been some sprinkles of of uh, dark units. You know, starting with Prompto and the Final Fantasy 15 events, even more recently with Golbez and Kane. But I haven't really seen these units making much of a dent. You know, in terms of dealing with the uh, with the the light cast. So, you know, where are we going? You know, over the next, you know, as we look into the spring and then you know into this summer. And that's really sort of the, what I was thinking about when I was putting this video together. Because I think that uh, more recently on the Japanese side, I've seen two particular units, which I think are very, very uh, strong and have the potential to really have the pendulum switch, you know, swing back the other way in terms of the dark elements and give them a fighting chance, you know, when we're talking about going up against the, you know, Jade and Elena's of the world. And those two units are Joker and Leela. It's a new version of Leela, actually, that just came out on the Japanese side. Joker is uh, something that we're going to see a little bit sooner. You know, he's uh, maybe about two and a half to three months away. But he's a 90 cost unit from the Persona 5 collaboration. 
that comes maybe about a month after the second anniversary. Now that's assuming that we get uh, that particular collaboration on the global side. You know, I don't really see any reason why we wouldn't, but uh, you know, just keep that in mind. But Leela is uh, about four months away and she's actually the first 100 cost, you know, permanent pool units that's been introduced since King Jaden. So very interesting there. So let's go into some of the reasons why I think, you know, the, these units are, are, you know, particularly strong and, and, and have very nice potential. Uh, starting off with uh, some of their stats, you know, you can see here Leela, very, very nice attack value, pushing over 600, very good agility at 68. I know that's, um, that's uh, you know, top tier when it comes to agility, anytime that you're 68 or higher. Dex and luck, again, are very, very strong, particularly the luck for, for Leela at uh, almost 270. And, you know, some nice resists there as well, particularly when you're when you're looking at uh, slash and missile damage. Now, jumping down to Joker, you can see very strong HP pool at almost 3,900. So he's got bruiser level, you know, hit points. Again, very nice Dex and luck for him as well, at, you know, 254 and 262 respectively. And then he has 15% slash resist. So, you know, just just right out of the gate, you know, very, very strong base stat. So I did play around in the build in the Japanese builder with these units. And, you know, uh, I want to kind of share with uh, with you some of the things that uh, that I was building in there. But starting off with uh, some some of the passives for these units, you know, obviously, as with any units, uh, you, you know, there's different ways that you can build them and, and they, they have those options as well. You know, in terms of Leela, uh, she has access to a, a pretty cool uh, defensive passive that gives her both slash and missile resistance. Again, very, very nice for dealing with uh, both Jaden and Elena, obviously. When looking at Joker, you know, he has very nice passives there as well in terms of some AOE resistance and agility that he can get. But I think he also has access to additional range in his kit as well. And that, you know, that's something as we kind of dive deeper into their kits, you'll see that he does have access to a lot of different missile attacks. So he can be used as like a proper range unit. And you know, that's sort of what I would say, consider maybe more of a, a defensive play for him. And that you can keep him maybe more out of range of Elena and uh, sort of hit her from a distance before you know she, that uh, she could potentially get to him so now jumping into the vision cards uh you know for this particular build obviously you know this is a card that we already have today on the global side uh the black rose of the battlefield you know very very strong card for dark and that gives that nice combination of both you know agility at 15 percent and 25 percent accuracy now a new vision card that we're going to be getting alongside joker uh is this persona 5 vision card you can see very nice base stats there with both dex and agility available on this card and very nice combination of you know offensive stats uh, and defensive stats when it comes to like the 25 percent hit points on the card now you may th be thinking to yourself you know maybe there's some overlap here with the with the black rose card you know that's okay uh, because you know this card is coming uh, post second anniversary and i do think that this card has some nice potential to be used as like a secondary vision card and the reason for that is that hit points is actually one of the least reduced stats uh, when it comes to equipping in that secondary slot. So I, I do like this card for that reason as well. And then the last vision card that I'm highlighting here is that, again, that Maidens of the Rose card. And then obviously that's for that base luck value that it provides. And then the uh, the accuracy boosts that it provide would be providing to this party with you know both luck and dex on it. Now, when I was putting this build together, I actually didn't equip any secondary vision cards in this build uh, or TMR runes, you know, even though you can technically will be able to do that in the future once we have these units. But I wanted to do it this way just so that we have some context and sort of the numbers that we're used to seeing today and what these units can achieve, uh, you know, under those conditions. And you can see here, you know, very nice, uh, you know, right off the bat, very nice hit points totals for both of these, you know, definitely both Bruiser class. And I don't even have any sort of attack up vision card in this in this build. And you can see very nice, you know, attack totals as well. But the thing that really is jumping out here is the dex and luck values, but both being well over 400 for both units. So, you know, in my opinion, that's that's putting them, you know, as a top class and when it comes to, to accuracy and being able to hit, you know, very, very high evade units. 
But, you know, another point here is, you know, very strong agility too for, for both of these units, particularly Joker, you know, at uh, topping out at 113 here. So another reason why I really like these units and I think they have good potential is that they have very strong mix in their kits of survivability and damage. You know, some highlights here, you know, particularly for, for Leela is she has a buff that she can put on herself that actually, when she hits a 20% HP threshold or lower, she actually procs off a heal on herself, uh, which heals about half of her hit points. And she also has access, you know, to a mortal spirit. So very strong combination there. You, you can imagine her taking like a, you know, a fatal damage hit and then just immediately procking back to 50% health. So very, very cool there. Uh, she does have access as well to some counter proc down with a buff that she can provide to her, to her allies as well. So basically with that buff, you don't have to even worry about putting the reduced counter down onto the enemy. It's just basically gives you an innate chance not to, to even proc it in the first place. But she comes as well with a weapon, uh, a new dagger that uh, lowers that proc chance as well. So sort of just out of the box, when she buffs herself, she can have an 80% counter chance down effect, which is which is very nice. Within Leela's sub job, she does get a paladin sub job. So she has access to some nice tools there with the uh, saintly wall and sentinel. Lastly, uh, a very interesting limit, limit break that she has that gives a, a very reliable chance to blind the enemies. And that's an AOE blind as well. Basically why, why I'm putting that here is that you may not consider these two units as particularly evasive. Like they don't have access to like evade passives or uh, like innate evade statistics. But when we're talking about the sort of raw luck values that these units can achieve, and in conjunction with sort of Leela being able to land that uh, that blind chance, suddenly these two units can become very, very evasive. You know, particularly if maybe you've, you've equipped uh, something like uh, the black garb on these units, which does would, would actually give them a little bit of evade. Um, so just something to note there. And you know, I think you can build some specific strategies around that limit break to to make them very, very hard to hit. Now, looking over to Joker, he has some pretty cool survivability buffs as well that sort of lean into that uh, bruiser nature of his. First of all, he has a uh, protect buff that he can give to his allies. And in addition to that, it would also give him uh, his own 35% all damage barrier. So very, very uh, nice, you know, damage mitigation buff there. Uh, as we sort of alluded to earlier, he does have access to uh, to missile damage and he can get actually up to to eight range, you know, with, uh, with a plus two passive and then uh, aimed fire that he has access to in his gunner kit. And potentially there, if you opted to take both range passives that he has, he can actually even get up to nine potential range which puts him up there among, you know, top tier uh, in terms of like missile units in the game. Joker does also have access to the Nightblade sub job, which is, uh, you know, like a manual PVP favorite. And that's because it has access to AP drain and double resist, two of the stronger uh, Nightblade skills. From an auto sense, he does have some ways to play around with uh, the enemy uh, targeting with a hate down ability. So, you know, another way to potentially improve the survivability and and, and how the enemy reacts to him. Now, jumping into sort of maybe some of the, the damage abilities that these two units have, they're firmly in sort of what we've been seeing with modern DPS, modern attackers, and that their attacks sort of play double duty and that they both provide very nice damage, but very nice utility at the same time. Uh, both of these units have access to several different types of break. You know, the Leela can, can actually break Protect, uh, which is a which is a pretty uh, you know unique skill. Not a lot of units have that. Both units have defensive breaks. Uh, Joker has that attack magic break as well. Both of these units also have access to multiple damage types. You know, Leela has the pugilist sub job, uh, so she has access to strike, and then Joker, as we talked about, has access to uh, different missile attacks. And he has access to missile attacks even within his main job. You don't have to necessarily take the gunner job to, to use those. So very, very strong there. Joker has access to a guaranteed hit with his limit break. And then Leela has access to a, a an enhanced accuracy attack as well that gives plus 30% to hit. Now, it's nice to kind of have those in your back pocket, but honestly, with the accuracy levels that these units can get to, I don't think that they really even need it. You know, in this build that, that I've been going through, 
Both of these units have access to over 100 accuracy, even without an Alex ring. And that's not even considering, again, sub VCs or, or runes that could, could bring that even higher. So very, very strong in, in the damage and utility as well. Now, sort of hot off the presses and, and what sort of prompted me to sort of jump in and start thinking about this and, and, and make this uh, this video is Stark just this week has has received the Anima vision card in Esper. And this is a, a 90 cost vision card. So I think trying to maybe equate the, the power level of what Light has with, with Bahamut. But you can see here the, you know, very nice stats on the Esper, you know, nice HP, agility, a good combination of Light Resist on there as well, Slash Resist. So something that can definitely help, uh, you know, these units in terms of dealing with, with the light element specifically. But really the power of this, I think, is in the vision card. I mean, just look at the base stats alone here on this vision card. Very nice attack value, very nice dex and luck base stats. Uh, even has some AP on there. And then five agility as well. So... I didn't actually in, in, include this uh, Esper or, or Vision card in my build. You can you can think about you know maybe some of the additional power that uh, you, you may be able to pull in uh, you know, if you were to, to pull this. It is a you know going to be a hard thing to get you know being a 90 cost. We can remember back to uh, to Bahamut and you know how hard he has been to get. But so that's about all that I had here for today. You know, are these units powerful enough to sort of swing back the, the balance in terms of light versus dark? On paper, I, I think very much so. I, I think the potential is here for a very strong PvP core, PvP duo, in pretty much any mode of the game, you know, manual or auto. You know, obviously they have a lot of tools at their disposal, you know, in terms of fighting back light element in, in, in particular. But I see these units as ve being very, very strong, you know, in terms of their accuracy, their survivabilities, the utility that they bring that make them pretty well suited to deal with, you know, pretty much any foe out there, you know, on the battlefield. So what do you guys think out there? You know, will we end up seeing another dark summer or is light going to still reign supreme? You know, tell me in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this content, you know, please hit that like and subscribe button. Help us grow the channel. But until then, I'll see you guys in my next video.